Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam with Historic Travels and welcome to the video. And for those of you who don't know, I am currently traveling right now. I'm not in West Virginia at the moment, I'm down in Florida. And let me tell you, the trip down here to Florida, <laughs> let me just say, it went completely different than anything I was expecting. And let me tell you, it was an adventure. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about this crazy adventure and what happened to me while I was currently traveling from West Virginia down to Florida. Just to give you a little bit of a heads up, I spent nearly 40 hours stuck on a train en route from Virginia. I drove to Virginia from West Virginia, from Virginia to Florida. Stay tuned for the entire story. Now, I guess the first thing I need to do in order for you to completely understand this story is to understand exactly how this story began. So essentially what's been going on, I was wanting to come down to Florida to actually visit a Titanic museum that is in Orlando, Florida. This museum is really cool. They have a lot of amazing artifacts from the Titanic. Uh, they actually have a piece of the Titanic's hall that was recovered from the wreck. So I just wanted to go to the museum. I wanted to document it, talk about it, and just try to make a pretty cool video going over the museum and all the stuff about it. So I'm like, you know what, let's take a trip. Let's actually go down to Florida, let's document it, and let's talk about it. So as I was planning the trip, my first thought was just to fly down to Florida. And when I was looking at flights, the flights were reasonably priced. I wasn't too surprised there. However, I don't know what's going on right now, but the cost of rental cars is absolutely through the roof right now. So after that, I'm like, after I realized that, I'm like, you know what, let's just drive. Let's just drive down to Florida. And, but at the same time, I'm like, I wonder if I could make a video documenting the whole travel experience. Maybe I can make a cool video about that. So at that point, I began researching taking a train down to Florida because taking trains in America isn't really as common here as it is over in like the UK or Europe or so on. Trains are kind of a kind of an afterthought, so to speak, in the United States. So when I was doing research, I discovered that Amtrak actually offers a service from the town of Wharton, Virginia, almost in DC, all the way down to Sanford, Florida, which is really close to Orlando. It's a direct express train, so Wharton, Virginia, all the way down to Sanford, Florida. And what's really cool about it is they won't, they don't just take you down. They'll actually load up your car and take your car down to Florida as well. I'm like, that is very cool. That is very unique. So I will take that down to Florida. I'll load my car up as cargo and I'll document the trip and talk about it because it was such a cool, such a unique experience that I'm like, this could make a pretty cool video. So I decided to do it. I booked the ticket, everything was good. And then the day of the trip came and huh, little did I know the adventure that I was about to undertake. On the day of the trip, I hopped in my car and began the long drive from my hometown to Lorton, Virginia. Now Lorton is roughly six hours or so away from my home. So this really wasn't a trip of convenience, so to speak. This train wasn't convenient for me to take down to Florida. It would have been a whole lot faster for me to drive. However, I was just going to take this trip for the experience and to make a cool video. But yep, the drive was pleasant enough. I did encounter some rain as I was trekking across West Virginia and into Virginia. But overall, it was a pleasant drive, very relaxing, and I couldn't wait to get to Lorton, Virginia and get on board the train. Now, once I got to Lorton, everything was incredibly simple as far as boarding the train, getting my car checked in and so on. I pulled into the station. They uh, gave me a ticket with a number on it, like a claim number for my car. Once I pulled up to the actual station, an Amtrak employee met me. He had this magnetic number plate thing that he stuck onto the side of my car. So the number on the magnetic plate matched the number on the ticket. So that's how I would recover my car once I got to Sanford. Got my stuff out of the car that I would need, because you gotta remember, the train would take about 16 hours to reach from Virginia down to Florida, and we were leaving at 4 p.m. So I was going to spend one night on the train. So I planned for that. I packed an overnight bag, got PJs, et cetera, et cetera and got everything I needed. And once I was good to go, the Amtrak employee took my car and then drove it over to where the cargo cars for the actual train were. And I actually did get some video of them actually taking a car and loading it onto the train. I will show you that right now. to say that was definitely super cool watching Amtrak take somebody's vehicle, drive it up that ramp and put it onto a cargo car that they're going to later attach to a passenger train. Very cool experience, very unique as well. And honestly, Amtrak really hit the nail on the head here when it comes to 
what they're trying to do with this service. I mean, think about it. There's a lot of people who would love to have their personal vehicle down in Florida, but don't want to make that long drive. This train offers the perfect solution for them. And honestly, I wish this service was offered in more places around the world and in the United States, because the only place that this train runs as of right now is from Lorton, Virginia down to Sanford, Florida. It doesn't go anywhere else in the United States. So maybe in the future, Amtrak will be able to expand upon this because I really believe there is a market for it. But then as I continued to wait for our time to actually board the train, I kind of just hung around the station, watched them load more vehicles, etc., etc. And then at around 2.30 p.m., we finally got the all clear that it was safe to board the train and get ready to depart Lorton, Virginia and head down to Sanford, Florida. Now, whenever you travel on Amtrak, you essentially have three options when it comes to what kind of accommodations you'll have while you're on board the train, you know, your seat or whatever. The first option is coach, which is just a standard seat like you would find on any bus, plane, train, whatever. These coach seats are actually very large and very spacious and very comfortable, you know? You have a lot more room in a coach seat on a train than you do in a standard, you know, main class cabin seat on an airplane. So overall, coach is a great experience. Number two, now this option is sometimes available and sometimes not, and that is business class on a train. Essentially, this is just a little bit of a nicer seat, a little bit more leg room, it's a little bit more quiet because there's less people in there, et cetera, et cetera. And the third option, and every time I've ever looked at Amtrak, this has been an option, is to book a room in a sleeper car, which is essentially a small private room just for you during your trip on the train. Now, for overnight trips, I would highly recommend that you get the sleeper car because essentially inside the sleeper car is two chairs that you can actually lay flat and turn into a bed. And you can actually fit two people per room because the top at the top of the room is essentially a bunk bed that can be pulled down. So it's very cool and very convenient for what it is. Now, as I said, if you're overnight, get the sleeper car. But if you're just gonna be traveling during the day, you know, coach or business class is more than enough. But Honestly, if you're gonna be sleeping on a train, definitely get the sleeper car, which is what I did for this trip. Now, when I initially made my reservation on board this train, I originally booked a coach seat because I figured that I could handle it overnight. It wouldn't be that big a deal. However, the more I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and get the sleeper car because I have a small door that I can lock to make sure my valuables are safe. I'll have a bed and just have a little bit overall more security of a standard hotel room than I would in coach. So I went ahead and upgraded. And boy, let me tell you, when the following day would begin, I would be even more grateful that I decided to upgrade to the sleeper car. And then right around 4 p.m., our train finally departed the station in Lorton and started heading for Safford, Florida. And honestly, at this point, everything was relaxing, the boarding process was seamless, and everything was good to go. Our car attendant came by and asked me what I would like for dinner. When you book a room in a sleeper car, your meals are included for free. I selected a chicken dinner with a drink and everything, and he said he'd bring it to me at 5 o'clock. I'm like, that's great. And then, yeah, just settled back, relaxed, and our train had Wi-Fi, so I was able to watch YouTube and Netflix, and yeah, we just got all geared up and ready to enjoy the 16-hour journey to Florida. If all goes well, we should arrive in uh, Orlando at around 9 a.m. the next day. But yeah, as the trip continued on, uh, everything was just kind of relaxing and everything just kind of fell into place. Everything seemed like up to that point that this trip was going to be a perfect one. Now, every sleeper car has a dedicated car attendant. In my car, his name was Mark, and Mark was very helpful, very friendly, and you know, he always went above and beyond to make sure that everybody in the sleeper car was incredibly comfortable and they knew exactly what was going on. So Mark, if you're watching this, thanks, you did a great job. And yeah, at exactly five o'clock in the evening, uh, Mark brought the food, he brought the dinner, uh, chicken dinner with fried rice, vegetables, and New York style cheesecake, which was very good. You have to remember, it is a train, so it is a frozen meal, so keep that in mind. But honestly, overall, it was a great meal. And yeah, after that, um, Mark came by a little bit later and asked me what time I would like to have my room turned into a bedroom. And I told him around 7 or 8 o'clock, and he's like, okay. So he came by around 7.30 or so, and then right around that time, I decided to go and use the sleeper car's other amenity, which is a shower. Yes, there is a shower on board the train. Now, the shower was... Okay, uh, my one critique about it was they did include uh, bars of soap. However, I didn't see any like shampoo or conditioner containers, which I was like, I didn't know I was supposed to bring my own. I figured that they would have like a squirting container or something in there, like maybe mounted to the wall or something. But yeah, there was none of that in there. So I thought that was kind of meh, but eh, no big deal. I took a quick shower, used the bar of soap and whatever. And then yeah, put on my PJs and headed back up to my room to get ready for the evening. And... 
Boy, I tell you, I still had no idea what was yet to come. Up to this point in the trip, everything was going pretty smoothly. Now, I do have one last video clip from on board the train the first night, you know, just me getting back to the room after the shower, talking about how they turned it into a bed, and yeah, just kind of talking about the overall experience. Now, this is stuff that we've already talked about before earlier in this video. However, I thought this shot was really good, so I did want to include it in this video just to give you guys a better idea as to what it's like to be inside one of these rooms after it's converted into a bedroom. Okay, so this will probably be my last video log for the night. Um, when I got on the train, uh, one of the perks, another perk to being in the sleeper car is that um, the conductor will actually ask you like, what time do you want your bed made? So I told him about eight o'clock or so. And then eight o'clock came, had a knock on my door and they took the, uh, the twin seats and converted it into a bed. So now there's a bed in this little tiny room on the train. Pretty cool. All right, everybody, well, hey, I'm gonna go to sleep. I'll see y'all in the morning. And yeah, that was pretty much it. Right after that happened, I laid down and started to drift off to sleep. And now right before I went to sleep, the conductor made one last announcement on the train that evening. And he said that in the middle of the night, they were going to stop the train and the engineers that are driving the engine, they were gonna do like a, a cruise shift. You know, they were actually gonna stop the train in a town. Another crew was actually gonna come on and take over for the engineers. And those replacement crew were gonna take us the rest of the way to Florida because engineers on Amtrak are only allowed to work for about 12 hours. So they have to stop the train somewhere and have another crew waiting to take over. It's a safety thing and I completely understand. So anyway, I heard that, didn't think that much of it and then drifted off to sleep. Now, I don't know what time, but I know at some point in the evening I woke up and I looked out the window and I saw that we were stopped. So without checking my, my watch or anything, I'm like, okay, we're, we're just stopped or the crew is, they're doing that cruise shift or whatever, no big deal. Drifted off to sleep again. And then a few hours later, I woke up again and I looked out the window and saw that we were still stopped. Let me roll a video clip that I shot right as soon as I woke up and realized that we were stopped. All right, so just a little update. We are currently in South Carolina and we have been stopped since about 1130 midnight last night. And it's almost six o'clock in the morning. So we are going to be so late getting into Florida. We were due to arrive at 9 a.m. So yeah, basically the whole time I've been asleep, the train's been stopped. Ugh, so that's probably gonna be three or four in the afternoon before we even get to Orlando. Yeesh. Oh, past Sam. You thinking we'd get there at four or five in the afternoon? <laughs> if only we could have been that lucky. But yeah, that didn't happen, but I'll get more into that later. So about an hour or so later, I finally get up out of bed and I head to the dining car to get breakfast. Breakfast was included. And while I was in there, I was talking to some people and they gave me another update. Have a look. Okay, so I just got my breakfast and I met a few people and talked to them real quick. And basically they told me it's probably going to be six or seven o'clock tonight before we get to Florida. I really hope it's not that late. Ugh. Oh, past Sam, if only you knew. If only you knew what was in store for you. But yeah, so as I was chilling in the room, we got an announcement over the train's PA system that another announcement about the entire situation was about to begin. And I actually did film the whole thing. I will roll that for you right now. We're about to have an announcement after sitting in this spot for six hours. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, some of you may have been up since this morning and realized that we are stopped and still in the same spot. We're currently in Florence, South Carolina, Florence, South Carolina. This is not where we anticipated it being at this time of the morning. However, due to some unforeseen issues concerning a freight train, which had nothing to do with us, there was a CSX freight train that did derail and it's some miles up in front of us. And this is the reason why we're still sitting in this holding pattern. We've been here about four hours. So some of you may say, well, it's why been longer than that. The announcement sooner. Well, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, since we were not in any imminent danger, there was no need to make that announcement and over the entire train. 
So in case you missed it, essentially what happened was uh, the conductor said that a freight train several miles ahead of us and on the same track derailed and they were in the process of putting it back on the tracks and everything and that's why we were delayed. We were stuck behind that freight train. And that is something I completely understand. That is not Amtrak's fault. I completely get it. You know, I, as I said, I understand. But here's something I need to say. The way the conductor made that announcement over the train's PA system I would not have done it like that. Just two things. Number one, he said that it had been four hours since we had stopped. Well, I'm fairly certain it was a lot longer than that because I do remember waking up in the middle of the night and noticing that we were stopped. Now, that could have been for something else. I don't know, but I do remember us being stopped. And number two, his whole line on, well, why didn't, you're asking, why didn't we make an announcement sooner? Well, we didn't think we needed to. We weren't in danger. Uh, I mean, I know what you're trying to say here, but that sounds kind of passive aggressive. And you've already got 200 people on this train that are already aggravated about being late. And then if you get on the PA system and you start talking like that, it's not good. So this would be a continuing pattern with him throughout the rest of our journey while we were stuck and all the way up to Florida. He would make several more PA announcements over the course of the day and his messages would continue to get more and more aggressive as time would go on. You know, he would be like, you guys, your passengers don't need to be blaming my Amtrak staff for this. And I don't know what was going on with that. I don't know if some other passengers were being irate. I don't know. But again, his announcement, I don't know. And uh, number two, he even also said at one point, if you guys are so unhappy about being so late, you guys should have traveled a day sooner. I'm like, yeah, that's not good. You shouldn't say stuff like that over the PA. You're supposed to, you know, have get, reassure people, you know, have people look to you as for leadership. You know, it's a bad situation, but let's stand together. Let's, you know, and now he did have some good moments too. There were a couple of small crises on board. There was um, a family that actually ran out of diapers for their baby and a, um, another train, another passenger train that was on another line that wasn't blocked by the wrecked freight train came by and they were actually able to get diapers off of that train over to our train. So, hey, good job for that. So, I mean, he did do his job and he did it well from what I saw. All I'm saying is the way he acted over the PA system had a lot to be desired and it did not help the situation. If, when you act like that with people who are already tense, you are quickly going to make the situation a lot worse. Yeah, but there wasn't really anything we could do about the whole situation except just try to, you know, relax and just try to find ways to occupy our time while we waited for the train to get moving. So I either hung out in my room, I explored the train, I, you know, just tried to find spots where I could do stretches or, you know, just found things to do. Watch Netflix or YouTube, yada, yada, yada. But as more and more time went by, the longer we were all stuck on the train and not moving, the more and more aggravated people were starting to get. And you have to remember, we were only in South Carolina. So once the train started moving, we still had another seven or eight hours to go before we made it to Florida. I mean, it was very rough. And you know, what made it worse is when we saw another train go by on the track that wasn't blocked. That just seemed to add to the aggravation of people on board. Again, I completely understand that this wasn't Amtrak's fault, but... <sighs> It was a rough situation. You've got 250 people contained in a small steel train. Of course, they're going to get aggravated. And the other thing is the Amtrak employees, they said they, could, they couldn't do it for safety reasons, but they wouldn't even let people off the train to stretch their legs or, you know, some people wanted to smoke and you weren't allowed to smoke on the train. So if, you're, if you smoke cigarettes, you know, that even adds more strain to you. And, you know, they wouldn't, they just, I get it. They couldn't let us off the train for safety reasons, but still, I'm, I hope I'm painting this picture clearly. It was a very stressful situation for everybody that was on board the train. Now, eventually, we got the announcement that they had finally cleared the track. So we're all like, yay, we're going to start moving again. Another problem, the Amtrak crew, the, the engineers that are running the train, their shift had run out. So if they're working on the train for 12 hours, as soon as their 12-hour mark hits, they're not allowed to drive the train anymore for safety reasons. So that meant, so the engineers, they hit that mark while we were sitting there stopped. So that meant they couldn't drive the train once the tracks were cleared, which added even more frustration to people. So we had to sit there another hour or so waiting on replacement crew to arrive. 
Ugh. So right around 2.30 in the afternoon, we finally got moving again. So up to this point, we had been stopped at least 12 hours, probably more like 13 or 14. And we still had another eight hours to go, minimum, before we reached Florida. But the important thing is we were actually moving again, so that was good. Now, as the day continued on, we would have to stop several more times due to freight trains going by and the engineering crew that replaced our old engineering crew back when we were stopped, well, their shift time ran out. So that means that they had to do another crew change, which was absolutely great, let me tell you. I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand it from a safety reason. I completely know why they have to do it. But still, I mean, when you're this far behind, any time you stop is just horrible. And it took about an hour for the replacement crew to arrive, so ugh. Anyway, as time went on, the conductor made an announcement that we would be arriving in Orlando at right around midnight. So I'm like, okay. And I decided to try to get some shut eye because I had about an hour drive ahead of me once I got off the train. And I went to sleep, and then I woke up and checked my phone and realized it was much later than I thought, and the train was still moving. I actually recorded it. Take a look. So just a quick update. They told us we would be in Sanford around 1 in the morning. It is now 3.30 a.m. and we are still not there. This is my second night on a train. And I should have been there at 9 a.m. yesterday morning. I am so ready to get off this stupid train. Ugh. We're 20 minutes out. It's finally over. <sighs> yeah, so as you can tell from that shot, at that point, I'm basically just done. I'm ready to get off the train. You know, I'm just, I'm tired, I'm fed up. And yeah, I was just, I just had enough. Now, as rough as it was for me, I had this other thought as well. I had a sleeper car room, so I had my own little private space in there. You know, I was able to take a shower the night before, and you know, I had a few luxuries being in a sleeper car room. What about the people in coach? You have to remember, coach is just a seat. They, they couldn't lay their chairs flat to make a bed. They didn't have a shower. They had no private space. I just thought about for a moment how much worse it would have been for them without having any room to kind of, you know, just do their own thing and anyway it would have been a thousand times worse than what i experienced for those in coach okay so we are at the end of the journey i finally made it to sanford florida just to clarify i should have been there at 9 a.m yesterday we just arrived it's 4 30 a.m the next day so you know ladies and gentlemen the station will be crowded uh the passengers that are waiting for this train are still in the station waiting on this train, so the station will be crowded, ladies and gentlemen, just so you know. There's people there waiting for the returning train. Oh my gosh. Oh, this lost power. So just to clarify something here, this entire trip should have lasted about 16 hours from the time we left the station in Virginia to the time we arrived in Florida or Orlando, Florida, be about 16 hours. We were supposed to arrive there at 9 a.m. the next day. At the time of our arrival, we had been on that train nearly 40 hours. We were supposed to arrive at 9 a.m. on May 6th. We arrived at 4.49 a.m. on May 7th. Ugh. Anyway, the unloading process went rather smoothly. Once we pulled into the station, everything went smoothly. We got off the train, yada, yada, yada. I got in my car. I got my car after about an hour or so of waiting for them to unload it, which was okay as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, then I just hit the road and um, I made it over to the uh, Daytona area. That's where I'm staying. I made it over there roughly around 6, 6.15 a.m. And I decided what better way to end this incredible and horrible ordeal than to go and watch the sunrise at the beach. And I made it to the beach about one to two minutes before sunrise, and I took some picture and some video. I made it. First thing I did was I came straight here to watch the sunrise. And yeah, that is the 
crazy story on how I got stuck on a train for 40 hours. Now, just to clarify here, I know it wasn't Amtrak's fault. I know they were put into a crazy tough situation based on everything that happened. And for the most part, the crew did really well. You know, we, we got our meals served good. You know, nobody went hungry. Uh, they did try to accommodate us the best they could. With, with the exception of the conductor's announcements, I'd say they did overall pretty well given the circumstances that we were faced with. So good job, Amtrak. But yeah, that's the story. All right, everybody. Well, hey, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. And please hit that like and subscribe button. And guys, hey, keep doing what you do. You guys are awesome. Oh, and in case you missed it, I do have a merch and I do have a Patreon store. There's links for that down below. All right, everybody. Well, hey, y'all stay safe out there. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night, everybody.